Welcome to the third installment of development in C++ with Haiku. What I'm going to show you today is uh, how to create a new GUI template project. So by launching Paladin, you see this interface. This is a new version uh, that I've created. So you click on create new application. And there's two GUI options in here. There's GUI main window and GUI window and menu. The only real difference is that this one has a menu widget. So I'm going to call this um, Thank you, GUI. My GUI. Create the project. What you'll see is if I go to the dependencies, you'll see you've got your main application file again, which again just has its standard main, which runs uh, an application. Um, but in this instance, what it does is it creates a new app instance. So the app in this case is a subclass of B application. B application is the main uh, GUI application class within Haiku. Uh, the reason it starts with B is because it's from the old original BIOS APIs. What you want to do here is if you're creating an application to open a particular type of file, what you can uh, what you can do is specify the MIME type there. What it also then does is the application itself doesn't have a UI. It could just be something in the background. So we need to create a main window for this and then we show that main window. The main creates a new app and then calls run. Every app instance has its own looper. A looper um, basically is a separate thread that enables uh, application events to be handled. So whilst that is running, this function stays live, so it doesn't just end the app instantly. So let's have a look at that window. This is the window itself. We see with subclass B window. Something that's important to notice is that if the class is B window, the uh, include will be window.h. So if we open up that main window here, we see B window, but it's in window.h, it's not B window.h. Just watch out for that one. B rect is really just a bound to where it starts uh, on the screen or within its particular location. So this will be 100 pixels in, 100 pixels in, so around about here on the screen. 500 wide, 400 high, with a title of main window. And it will be a titled window, unsurprisingly. We are providing titles, so it would be much like this one here uh, with asynchronous controls. And then what we're doing here is we're creating a new rectangle, which will be the rectangle of the inner space. So you're using this application as an example. This top left point here where my mouse cursor is, that would be zero, zero. Um, and what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, we're creating a new rectangle, which is the same as my current bounds, which will be the entire area of the application. And then saying the bottom though is 20. So it's basically just this area. So we're cutting out this area for the menu bar. What we're then doing is creating a new menu bar instance with those bounds with an internal name of menu bar. So this isn't displayed anywhere. It's just an internal name. And then we add the child to the current window, including that. Now it's important to mention that here we're doing very much a manual layout. There is a layout API within HiQ, but this sample app is a very, very simple sample app, so it doesn't use it. The other key thing to mention is as well is these elements here. This is messaging. So I mentioned before that an application has a looper. Um, Windows have loopers too. Um, what that enables you to do is handle messages as they are raised by elements within the display. So if this had kind of 20 different visual elements, all those messages would bubble up through the hierarchy of the display uh, and be handled by this message received class. So for example, if you're a menu bar and you select a menu item, it would come up and bubble up into here. That's why there's this message received. And these are just simple uh, kind of four ch character char uh, or large integer, um, uh, effectively constants that you define within your app. There are some standard ones as well you can use, uh, depending on what the action is. So for example, key press down, key press up, those sorts of things, if they're not handled by the element. 
and then what we're doing by default here is we're passing the message received onto the parent B window class. Uh, this is quite important because if you think of like if I click on this element here to close a window, um, we have to think well okay we need to pass that message on. So that will pass as a message onto the B window class. When I click that button that will in effect then call the quit requested method and then here we can say well okay I'm going to tell the app so my app that owns uh, this particular window say oh by the way because I'm the main window um, that means we need to quit the application and that's what effectively then ends the looper causing this function to return which then deletes the app and returns finishing the application let's just build this so make this project and run this project and here we see uh, my main window here displayed up here 100 by 100 in uh, was it 500 wide 400 deep and there is a menu bar but there's no menu items there yet so there's a menu bar and a completely blank display otherwise if I click on here it will execute uh, the closing of the window and finish the application instance that's a pretty straightforward way of uh, in a GUI application in Haiku. You can find out more information on the visual GUI APIs and the layout API on the Haiku website and I'll post links to that to the description of this video. Thanks.